Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I'd like to direct my first question to Mr. McNulty. Uh, in everybody's testimony, it talked about workforce development and the needs of the systems uh, to replenish their workforce. Uh, I worked in 2018 with Senator Booker on this committee to uh, draft and enact our legislation actually establishing a EP EPA workforce development, um, excuse me, EPA workforce development that is in high demand, I understand. I understand it's oversubscribed. Ms. Powell uh, thanked me here in person, but uh, Mike, if you could, or Mr. McNulty, if you could, what are the chief challenges facing your workforce? Is it retirements, retention, lack of interest, lack of qualified candidates? Can you expound on that for me, please? Pardon me, Senator. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm getting used to this uh, new way of uh, me having meetings. Uh, Senator, I think the best answer would be D, all of the above. Uh, retirements are certainly uh, uh, upon us. Uh, it is uh, tough to require uh, to uh, recruit good candidates. Uh, so we're, we, we do struggle with that here, especially in West Virginia. Um, Let's let's not forget that many rural communities are still dealing with the opioid crisis. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to find uh, good qualified candidates that, uh, that that don't have substance abuse uh, issues. Um, so we appreciate all of Congress's work to uh, to help with that problem. But uh, also, uh, you know, we we are working towards here in West Virginia the apprenticeship program. And I think that it's going to be a very successful program. Uh, I know that uh, West Virginia Rural Water is getting that kick started, and we really look forward to the availability of, of bringing young folks in to, uh, to to learn the business and to become qualified operators. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Powell, did you want to uh, speak to that? I, I certainly can, uh, uh, Senator Capito, and I agree with my, my colleague. Um, it is all of the above, and um, you know we have we have to, as a water sector, do a better job about promoting the opportunities that exist to work in the water sector. Um, I think we employ every type of uh, career field uh, there is, from finance to scientists. Uh, to the, the on, boots on the ground workers. Uh, so we have to do a better job of getting the messages out. Um, but we've also, as a water sector, started to pursue um, different means of recruiting uh, uh, talent. Um, if the talent doesn't come to you, go out and get it. And that's certainly what we did in Atlanta when we formed a partnership with the Department of Corrections uh, to put uh, folks that were reentering society, uh, fathers, uh, put them to work as watershed trainees who then eventually became full-time employees of the utility. Uh, and we were able to, to do uh, two cohorts. <laughs> we also formed a partnership for youth, and we also formed a partnership focused on women who were victims of, of um, uh, trafficking. And so I think those types of programs, which are supported by uh, the grant uh, funding program that you championed, are important because it's uh, introducing folks that wouldn't otherwise look at the sector to opportunities for uh, uh, good career paths, low barrier to entry jobs, uh, and 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 stable work with uh, with with good wages. All right. Thank you. Uh, on the resiliency and data availability, um, well, actually, on the data availability, I mentioned in my opening statement that sometimes the data we want to pinpoint the help where the need is most uh, is most apparent. And uh, Mr. McNulty, could you, uh, I'm going to ask two questions, but you can pick, can you provide your perspective on the best way to ensure that this committee has a working understanding of the current existing challenges and associated needs facing your systems, but also how would you propose that we would improve the data available to EPA, Congress, and other stakeholders to make sure that we are targeting and using that for our policy decisions? I, I believe the, the best way to to learn about the the challenges that we're facing is boots on the ground, Senator. Um, I think visits uh, out out to the utilities are are critical. I know that you've uh, been all around West Virginia. You've done that. You've uh, you've you've been to these communities. You see firsthand. Uh, I think that uh, 
the more the better in that respect. Uh, and that's how Congress is really going to learn what those needs are. Uh, you know, I can't stress enough when we talk about need, uh, when I m mentioned uh, a moment ago about debt forgiveness, you know, debt is one of the heaviest burdens that utilities face. And you know, when we talk about the pandemic and, and the uh, uh, shutoffs uh, and, and those revenue drops, uh, you know, the debt services didn't stop. You know, those, those payments were still due. So, you know, I, I think that uh, again, that if we get out and, 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 and visit and learn and talk to those uh, water and wastewater professionals, that's the best way to, to understand the need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, 